Let's analyze for historical accuracy Assassin's Creed Valhalla's promotional images. Now before you all get up in arms and say, it's a video game, it doesn't need to be accurate, it's for fun, I'm probably going to play the game and enjoy it, as I have done with the other Assassin's Creed games. But despite that, in spite of its historical fiction, meaning they can take liberties in depicting something they want to, as it is fiction, it still affects people's perception of history. I've seen teachers teaching incorrect things about history and using video games like Assassin's Creed and movies that have inaccurate history in them to back up their points. So it's important how we depict history as well and understand when things are depicted accurately and when they're not. And I do appreciate that the team behind Assassin's Creed do show at the side of the game that it is inspired by history and not real history. Now let's take a dive into these promotional images. First, look at this image. I can tell you, none of this attire was worn during the Viking Age. This appears more inspired by a TV show Vikings than by actual history. We know clearly what Viking Age attire looked like, which is usually a pair of trousers or tights, pair of shoes, leather shoes maybe going up a little bit more become kind of boots with a tunic, brightly colored. Not this mishmash fur and leather and a little bit of wool thrown everywhere. No, this, this is very ahistorical. And now on the other things, the raven on this man the front shoulder, who I assume this main and the front is the main character. This raven, I'm not sure if they would use ravens off their ships, but they did use ravens from their ships to find land. If they released a raven and it returned with nothing, they knew there wasn't land nearby. But if it returned with a twig, or if it didn't return at all, they knew there was land that would go that direction. Now. Going past this, if we look at the axes this man is holding, these axes are ridiculously thick. These are wood splitting wedge axe thickness. Not what you want using combat. Those things would probably weigh 10 or 20 pounds. A real battle axe, the head of the most high gangs weighs about one and a half, maybe two pounds. The whole thing, two to two and a half pounds. Pretty light weapons. I do like that they're bearded, which is accurate, but they're overly thick. Also, metal shafts would not be affected as they increased weight, and wasn't really a thing done at that time. Though metal shafts for axes and warhammers were done later in the medieval period, but that's much later than this. If we look at that axe being held by the guy, the first guy to the left, that thing is huge, way bigger than any day axe, way thicker, that is way larger, way longer, it is comically over proportioned. And let's not even talk about his and the woman next to him's shoulder pads. Those look like some weird leather fantasy football shoulder pads. They did not wear such things. Now, if those are made of thick, boiled hide or leather, they can work as armor against some weapons. But we don't have any evidence for such armor existing in the Viking era. More, what they would have been wearing if they did have armor, which was expensive, would be a male hauberk. Or what some might call a shirt of chainmail. And but more often we just have a helmet. Now we do see a helmet on this guy to the right. Though those overly large, comically walrusy cheek plates are way too big and we don't really have any surviving Viking helms. We do have one, the Guthberg helm, which is before the Viking Age, that does show a face covering, but does not have shoulder, well, cheek plates. Sorry if I'm mis saying the cheek plates, like that one does. And helmets have cheek plates, but never to my knowledge that big, but some might have. But the top of the helmet does look fine. And then I think the spear that some Billy Bowen looks fine. The bone background looks good, this is, so it does look like it's cut colored and painted. I'm not sure if they did that. Don't know of any evidence of it, but they might have. And if we look back at that castle in the far back end, we know it's supposed to be taking place in Anglo-Saxon England. Anglo-Saxon England did not build stone castles. They might have a stone keep or two. Not sure about that one. But stone castles like that were not a thing. That castle looks more like 13th or 14th century castle. Actually, it looks like a specific castle that I can't remember the name of, but that castle did not exist during the Viking Age. Okay, down to the next image. Here we see what I guess is supposed to be a little battle and raid. And the biggest thing that stands out to me is, once again, our 
Byzantine cataphract wannabe whose Anglo-Saxon has appeared. Those armors as covering as Byzantine cataphract, but it looks like it. And he's wielding a Type 13A oak shot sword, long sword, which would be a 14th century sword and not a Viking age sword. This probably takes place in the 9th or 10th century, so that's just way out of date. Also, if it's anything like the one we saw in the trailer, the pummel of that sword is even more out of date, more like a 16th century pummel. But we, I do like the kaisers and rounders that are accurate for having rounders and kaisers at the same time. They did it at the same time. The round shirt would often be covered with any hide or leather or cloth facing. We've often even found laws in, in English, like England requiring specific types of facing. An iron rim, not really much of a thing. A few did, but most would have had a hide or rawhide rim. Once again, the Vikings attire just looks awful, and I can't really say much about the Anglo-Saxon attire, it's kind of hard to see here, but it doesn't look any better. Though it does appear maybe, actually, actually no. One of them, the archer, does appear to be wearing a male halberd, which does look good. They would wear male halberds. Actually, the Anglo-Saxon and the Vikings should be attired pretty similar. And comments about the hairdos, the hairdos, no, uh, don't really know of evidence for such hairdos. Let's the Vikings. Uh, now, this symbols on this sh that Anglo Saxon shield, or supposed to be Anglo Saxon shield, in the front, and that banner held by the same guy, which I don't know why the guy held, holding the banner, or actually holding the banner on the spear is standing in front of the battle. That makes no sense. But their symbols look more Byzantine, which I'm not sure why Byzantine symbols are in Anglo Saxon England. But I have heard apparently. In earlier games of the SQ years, ones I have not played, I've only played the more recent ones, that they did tie the villains, the Templar, in the SQ universe to the Byzantine. So maybe that's the reason there. Maybe it's part of their historical fiction. But one big thing, I see a rectangular shield. I know of no evidence for rectangular shields during the Viking Age, especially not used among Vikings. Rectangular shields are a big thing to use if you're fighting formation in large groups. Now, if I could define information, but then raiding, it would not really be saying you want out raiding. Okay, down to this next image. We see a boat again. This long ship looks mostly good. It's clan built as it should be. N nice carvings into the bow and stern, which look good, and they did do that. And the cell is nicely colored as they did. I'm not sure if they do one solid color ever, but looks good. And I like they have the rudder as the Side rather post, which or which is good. That looks good. I'm not sure if they paint them, but it would work. Uh, once again, we have a stone keep. That stone keep by the ruin style it looks like it's probably something of the 13th or 14th century, not same you see in the Viking Age. And definitely not Anglo Saxon England, as they did not build stone keeps. Stone keeps were brought by the Normans. Okay, to the next image. Here we have another image with our wannabe Viking in his not Viking attire with his still half dead overly thick axes. And uh, we get to see another one of those helmets with the big cheek plates out. That helmet down there. If you remove the cheek plates and just add a little like ring attaching have arc attaching the nose piece to the side stem that would look like the good book helm. But with those cheek plates, that's very inaccurate. And now looking at the bow of the long ship we see here, the aesthetic of it does not appear something of the Viking Age aesthetic. And what I'm referring to is that kind of scaled lumps of the back of the and 3D shape of the drag. The what I've seen of the ships, the aesthetic of the dragon on the front, they did have a dragon on the front, would be more of a 2D image with carvings into the side of the knots. That's more of the aesthetic they would have in the front. Now, maybe one of these does exist, but I do not know of it. And if we look again, we see once again a 13th or 14th century stone castle. It does not fit anywhere at this time period, definitely not Anglo Saxon England. Okay, now down to this next image. We see a battle in the snow between, well, what I could best sum up is some person with random attire, supposed to be a Viking with two axes, versus some person in random attire with a giant 
two-handed morning star. Now, there are some artistic renderings of, in the medieval period, of one hand morning star with a two-handed flail, but looks like a cultural flail, not a morning star. Neither of them having that long of chain. Also, it's debatable if they've actually ever used because there isn't really much archaeological evidence for them. And two-handed morning star with that big of chain would be more hazardous to you than to the enemy. As you. you look there, the arc of that thing is aiming towards its head. Also, that style of helm with the fully enclosed face. That would be more of a 11th century style home. And neither of their attire is very accurate. And, but snow, snow, yes, they do have snow. That, that's accurate. And bright colors, I like the bright colors. Now, sorry, I skipped over the image I was intending to go to. Now, if we look over at this image, I guess these are supposed to be three main characters. None of their attire is good. Their attire is... Well, it's very fancy, but I do like it. We're inside some stone building. Uh, mm, mm, not sure if it's the right style for the era, but might be. I need to see more to tell that. But I do like stained glass windows, which do look good for the era. That would be a common thing. I do like that there's candles lying in the room. There might be torches in there, which would be wrong, but I do like that this shows candles, which is good. That's good, the stained glass is good. Now, most likely, the inside of the walls would be whitewashed and painted inside of buildings. So that is not the most accurate. Now, with this next image, I guess we can have animals help us. Which, I'm not sure of any Vikings ever domesticating polar bears. Not sure of any trained polar bears. I'm not even sure if they interact with polar bears at any time. But it is possible. Probably not saying with the embellish because often you don't use very many animals in battle other than for riding because it might turn on you. It might. It's hard to get to go because often you teach animals by feeding them. Once again, the Viking attire in the background is very inaccurate, and in the heritage style, we do not really have evidence for such a shaven side of the head hair hairstyle. There's some indications that maybe we more have evidence for a shaven back of head or. Braided long locks, but not that side. That's more like the back of TV show. And his axe is once again comically overly large. Now, down this image, you see a Viking coming towards some town. It looks like it's partially ruined. Mm, what does it say here? That shield, once again, iron rimmed, not very common. It would be more likely to be hide rimmed. And it's way too thick. There are some indications of shields that thick, but most spiky shields taper down towards the sides, usually getting within like an eighth or a quarter of an inch at the edges, and going up to maybe half an inch near the boss. And yes, even at that thin, they were pretty durable. You could actually catch up in the edges of the shield, which could be advantageous. And and that thing made them substantially lighter and easier to move. That shield there it looks at least a half inch thick. That thing will probably weigh 20 pounds. Actual historical Viking Age shields often weigh like 5 to 6. It's substantially easier to use. Once again, that tire does not look good. That axe is way too thick. But the buildings in the distance, I think they look, I think they look relatively good for the era. Though I need to see closer to tell. Now to our last image, and once again what I want to say is, what's with the staff church coming back? That is a 11th through 14th century, sorry if I messed with the dates, church. It is clearly Christian in its shape and design. It is inspired by traditional Nordic designs, so there might be some very similar aesthetics, but not in the exact same structure. But it is something that people love to throw in because that is distinguishing known as Nordic. Though it's after the Viking Age, and it's a Christian style of church. So it doesn't really fit in this setting. Once again, the axe is comically large, and that shield is comically small for Viking Age shield. Viking Age shields are standing much wider than that. So there might have been some that narrow. And if we look, I do like he's holding a torch to his side. Though, if traveling for a long time outside at night, I expect more likely to use some type of lantern or lamp burning oil than using a torch, because torches are short-lived burn. But if you do need a lot of light quickly, a torch was used. 
that brazen base in the fire. Not sure why that seems to burning. That's not really an accurate thing to have for the era. But once again, this is my look at these promotional images for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and just how they compare to actual history. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe.